Today I want to talk about the cell theory. Evidence that organisms are made of cells comes from observations as done by scientists like Robert Hooke, who discovered that cork plants are made of these regular repeating units, which he called cells, because they resembled cells such as those in a monastery where monks prayed and lived. That observations by Hooke and his contemporary Antony van Leeuwenhoek uh, with their own versions of uh, the modern compound microscope, helped confirm that living organisms are indeed made of cells. Uh, using experiments uh, as done by Van Leeuwenhoek and uh, Robert Hooke and others, we come to the modern synthesis of uh, what the cell theory is. The first uh, tenet or statement of the cell theory is that all living things are made of one or more cells. And the second is that the cell is the most basic unit of life. And the third is that all cells arise from pre-existing cells. I want to explore these in a little bit of detail today. So the first, that all living things are made of cells. may be obvious to us today, but it was not always so. That when you actually examine cells, as uh, Anthony van Leeuwenhoek did, what we find is that organisms are made of a variety of different types of cells that come in a variety of different shapes and sizes based on their functions. He examined cells from animals and plants, as well as from uh, fresh water sources, as well as from uh, his body fluids, including scrapings from his teeth and others, that uh, we also find that the uh, part of the organism that functions autonomously by itself is referred to as the cell, that uh, when we look at uh, the inside of you, that various structures in your bodies, these tissues or organs, may be made of cells, which themselves are made of smaller components. All of these parts work together to enable your structure, your function, and organization. That if we look at, let's say, an animal such as yourself, the cells work together in uh, larger organizational groups called tissues, many cells working together, which uh, many different tissues come together to make an organ. Now, many different organs come together to make an organ system which works together to carry out uh, all of these organs, I should say, work together to carry out a particular system uh, or function in your body. The same with plants. For example, a root hair cell is specialized for bringing in water and minerals. It may be part of a tissue which itself uh, is part of an organ which makes up the vascular system for transporting materials around the organism, this vascular plant. It's uh, in uh, uh, the green plant kingdom. The third tenet of the cell theory is that all cells arise from pre-existing cells. Before this, there had been this uh, almost Greek, ancient Greek idea of spontaneous generation. Other scientists uh, more recently have advanced this idea as well, like Jan Baptiste von Helmont, who proposed ideas like if you take some wheat or some grain and mix in some dirty laundry, that after about three weeks, mice appear. That for some reason, you can have life appearing from uh, garbage, effectively. That uh, this also extended to uh, flies. For example, flies seem to just appear out of rotting food and meat. That uh, this was not conclusively tested until uh, Francisco Reddy came along in uh, the 1600s. He had a, uh, a flask full of food, and if you left it unsealed, you saw flies all over it, and after a while, maggots appeared. That if you left the flask sealed, no flies came because they were not attracted to the smell. But if the flasks were covered in gauze, if the idea of spontaneous generation were true, then these maggots would still appear here. But the maggots were uh, the result of eggs laid by these flies on top of the gauze. None appeared here itself, thereby discrediting the idea of spontaneous generation. You also had Van Leeuwenhoek, who uh, made observations about how sperm and egg cells came together to, to develop the next generation. Uh, he didn't quite see this. No, it was more... Uh, like this probably these are egg cells and a multitude of sperm around them attempting to fertilize that once we follow the zygote this fertilized egg cell further we can also trace how all of the different cells and tissues of your body come about from this original's fertilized egg or zygote the idea of spontaneous generation was finally and fully uh, discredited by the experiments of louis pasteur in the 19th century, who took some nutrient medium, a broth or soup, and heated it to sterilize it, to kill everything living in there. Then he left it alone. The long, thin neck of this tube 
meant that anything falling in, these bacteria or mold spores from the air, would be trapped here and never enter the broth itself. But if you ever broke the neck of this tube, you'd see all sorts of things fall in and cause a growth of bacteria and mold on the inside of this tube, thereby proving that life did not appear in this flask out of nothing, that it had to come from somewhere, that existing cells that fell into the broth led to the growth of various things in uh, this broth, this medium itself. So, in summary, the cell theory states that all living things are made of one or more cells. The cell is the most basic unit of structure, function, and organization, and all cells are made from pre-existing ones. And there is a lot of experimental evidence that exists for the cell theory, including uh, simple observations, as done by Hook, Leeuwenhoek, Van Leeuwenhoek, and others, as well as experimental evidence from the experiments of Francesco Reddy and Louis Pasteur.